I flew halfway around the world to windsurf in Japan and to take part in the last World Cup of this season. So this is how it went. The PWA World Cup in Japan um, is already quite some time ago, um, a few weeks to be exact. Um, when I came home after the event, um, I was laying in bed for two weeks um, due to COVID. Um, I think I got it there um, on the last event day or the day after. But yeah, just when I arrived um, at my parents' place here in Germany, um, I got ill and positive and uh, whatever. But now I'm, I'm feeling better. And yeah, I wanted to talk you through the event um, as always. And uh, but before I do that, um, quick shout out to my sponsors who made the whole um, season possible and also this amazing trip to Japan, um, which first of all is Patrick, um, the brand for my amazing racing and windsurf gear, and of course uh, Wind Lounge. Um, they are an online surf shop, and they are focusing on customer service. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have questions um, for the perfect gear setup for you, um, for your conditions at home, whatever, just send them a message and uh, check out what they have. Of course, they have all the beloved Patrick uh, gear that I'm also using. But um, yeah, let's start with um, the trip to Japan. I have to say I'm always quite nervous about traveling and I'm also sometimes even scared and it already was like this um, in summer when I flew to the Canaries, but of course to fly to Japan um, is a whole nother story. So I was very um, fortunate to travel with Nico Preen. Um, he has been there before and was flying um, also to Thailand. So um, he's experienced and it was nice sh sharing the trip with him. And to be honest, the trip itself was not as hard as I thought. Um, the flights went all smooth and since or yeah, since the moment we arrived there, we basically didn't have to think about any administration stuff because we walked out of the airport or out of the security with our gear and there were um, some people from the organizers and we put our gear on the truck and the bus drove us to the, ho uh, to the hotel. So it was an amazing experience and everything was very um, yeah, well structured and well organized. Unfortunately for Nico, um, he got kind of ill, he got a food poisoning or some kind of allergic reaction. So um, yeah, he was in, in, in hospital and in, in our hotel room for the first day. So um, I had the chance to go on the water to test the conditions and to get used to the time difference and, and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm happy that he uh, got back quickly to also join the event as planned. And um, yeah, we basically, we had five event days um, and we did majority of the races on the second day and on the fourth day. Um, so I will mainly talk about them uh, because the days in between and also the first day we had some light wins. We did, I don't know, one or two heats maybe, but it was not really, wasn't it. So we were on standby uh, for a long um, period. But anyway, the, the second event day, uh, we did four eliminations and um, I came into the event in seventh place. So I was already quite happy with my, how my season was going and I knew that the points are quite tight um, above me and below me so that I could gain some places but maybe also lose some. But I was surely in the top 10, which already yeah, gave me a nice, um, let's say a nice backup if, you know, if the event is not going my way. But for sure, after the great success on Sylt, I wanted to end the season on a high uh, with a bang, you know, to yeah, perform my best again. And um, on the first day, I had a ninth place, a fourth place, a twelfth, and a an, uh, qualification round exit, so 30th place or something. And um, there will be a video coming about my top five moments of the whole season, so make sure to subscribe to the channel um, to not miss that. 
So I thought, why not um, also showing um, the bad moments uh, of some events and not always uh, pointing out the highlights. And the fourth elimination on the first day was such an elimination. Here we go. Bang. Mateo Yukino needs to put a good result in this elimination. I would say he needs a bullet. If he's going to have a chance at a world title this year, he needs to put in a very good result here. And at the moment, he's in a bit of trouble, I would say. And it is a tricky one. McMillan in this. And it is going to be McMillan going round in first place. I told you, he's going to be causing some problems. Then Bruno Martini, then Benedetti, then Becker, and Matteo Iacchino is out of the top four at the moment, and he's not in striking distance either. Wow. This world title race could be uh, done and dusted by the end of the first day. Bruno Martini, looks like McMillan, looks like Becker, then Benedetti, then we've got the uh, Geordie Vonk on the Duotone. Matteo Iacchino is not in the top four. And like I said, he's not in striking distance at the moment. The problem for Matteo Iacchino is now he's got Becker in fourth place. Matteo Iacchino is challenging hard Michelle Becker. And this is not all over. Now he is within striking distance. Matteo Iacchino is fully within striking distance. And it wouldn't surprise me to come out in third place here. Matteo Iacchino has just done what I didn't think was possible and he's had to duck and Becker goes down. And there we go. Wow, an exciting race in the quarterfinal stages and Michelle Becker is the man to hit the deck. I was in the in the qualification heat with Matteo Iacchino and some more, but there was also one guy sailing in the wrong heat, which was Bruno Martini. And you know, the top four of each heat advances to the next round. So it's really crucial to be in a top four. And Bruno was somewhere in front, maybe even uh, leading the heat. So everyone was counting, you know, and I was in fifth position at the last market fighting with, Mate with Matteo. And then I dropped the jive because I thought it's all or nothing. I have to gain another place to go in the next round while uh, I just could have cruised in in fifth place uh, because uh, Bruno got disqualified. So that was really a bad experience. Um, but yeah, never happened to me before. And now I will pay more attention to who is really in my heat. So I can tell that maybe that one guy is doing a mistake and not me. After that first racing day, um, I found myself, I think, in 12th place um, at the end. Um, which was basically due to a lot of people doing well. Um, because I thought I was quite average with the ninth place, also fourth place, you know. Um, but yeah, I was 12th, I was not satisfied, um, not what I was hoping for. And um, I can tell you that the event itself felt so nice with the people around, with the organizers. Um, I was in contact with the distributor of Patrick um, in Japan, uh, with the um, guys from the, or the representative of the windsurfing association in Japan and also just a lot of passionate windsurfers who took part in the event but also came to visit so it was a great experience and yeah also the whole trip itself so I really wanted to have also a good racing experience to yeah form just a, a perfect trip so um, now coming to the next racing day which was the fourth day in total um, I thought that this is the, the day to be great because it's the last, possibly the last racing day of the season because the forecast showed like this. Um, so I, th I, thought my, uh, I thought myself, um, yeah, go out there, be great, sail how you can or yeah, and try to enjoy it as always. And this is how I did. I got a sixth place and a fourth place. And um, so I qualified for both winners finals, but um, the sixth place, as I said, not everything is going going well because that was a terrible fi final. Um, it felt so shitty. I think the last time we seen it, it's like probably over three decades ago. De decades ago, it's got to be either Robbie Nash or Bjorn Dunkerbeck. You know, something in that era was the last time we saw someone who's 20 years old winning the Slalom World Title. So it ain't easy. Nerves could come into it. 
Will we see the machine break? We're about to find out, but it's a great start from Benedetti on the right-hand side on the Challenger. A good start from Amado Vrieswijk in the middle. Also, Cedric Board, but there's a few guys who are really off the pace on the start. Not quite sure what happened there. Nico Preen is one of them. Becker is also another one with a bad start. Little wobble from uh, Board. Amado Vrieswijk, though, will jibe in first place. Second place, Johan So. Then Benedetti on the inside. Then Cedric Board. Pierre Mortefon is in the water. Becker coming round. Johan So has made his move. And that could be even closer to a world title. He has got an Italian next to him. And Amado Vrieswijk has gone down. Amado Vrieswijk has gone down. Johan So has let Benedetti go through. Cedric Board has gone down. Benedetti's pumping. I tell you what, this is going to be very, very close. It looks like Benedetti gets the win. Yeah, he crashes over the line. There was a huge wind shift just before the start. So I wanted to start at the pin, just like uh, Nico Preen. And um, there was a wind shift. So a minute before the race, when we are already going towards the starting line again, um, I realized, oh, oh shit, instead of yeah, positioning myself, I really need to go upwind and I was on small foil kit, so it was really annoying to point upwind, maybe even pumping on 4.8 or 6.0 and then making the starting line, the, the, the starting pin felt like rounding an upward, uh, upwind mark in course racing. So I was, I don't know, 50 meters behind um, the other people and um, I was speaking to Nico who had the same struggle that the final is really uh, it, the, you know, obviously the best to sail in because the first few rounds are so stressful. Every small mistake um, can kick you out of the elimination. But once you get to the final, you can decide how much you want to push and um, how much risk you want to, um, to put yourself in. So it's really the moment to enjoy the race and to collect the points. So obviously it's terrible to, to start way from the back. But, yeah, at least I had the fourth place in the last elimination of the season. Big gust coming into the competition area. As we get ready for this start, there's a huge gust coming through. This is time to perfection. Less than, uh, well, 10 seconds to go. We've got Matteo Iacchino down this bottom end. Bruno Martini as well. There's only two Italians. Then Colombo up the top end. We've got Maciek Rakowski near the boat. Becker's up there as well. Good start. Maciek Rakowski right on the money there. In the middle of your picture though, Amado Vrieswijk going for the competition win. Needs to win this final to be leading Japan 2023. We've got Colombo down the bottom end challenging the two Italians and he's rolled over the top of Matteo Iacchino. Amado Vrieswijk who's going to go around in first place with a hell of a lead. Second place it is Maciek Rakowski, both of them cleanly round. Then we've got Colombo, Becker, Bruno Martini, Hooper, Mat uh, Matteo Iacchino is right back. This is not what he needs if he's going to give him chances, uh, give himself a chance at the world title. Maciek Rakowski, could he finally find his form? Amado Vrieswijk touches down but makes it through cleanly. Big gust and Bruno gets a little bit loose. Maciek stays on as Becker comes through up into third place. Colombo pumping for all he's worth in about fourth place. Matteo Iacchino has dropped back a little bit. Then we've got Hooper. So two jibe marks to go. Amado Vrieswijk cannot afford a mistake. A second place would not be good enough. He back wins the sale, but he makes it round. Maciek Rakowski in second, Becker in third, Bruno Martini in fourth. Just one jibe. Needs to keep it high and dry. It's looking solid. Has a little bit of a look there, but he's round cleanly. Maciek Rakowski round cleanly. Oh, look at that. Is that Matteo Iacchino right back up into third place? And that is what he needs. He needs as many points as he can now. He's going to have to push Becker really hard. Becker's not going to give up, but there's only one winner in elimination six, and it is Amado Vrieswijk from Bonaire. Second place in this elimination, Maciek Rakowski finally. Matteo Iacchino in third. That's a great comeback from him. Then we've got Becker, Martini, Colombo, Hooper and Vonk coming over the line. Michelle, big fight there with Matteo at the end. Talk us through the race. Uh, yeah, it was a weird race because uh, yeah, they extended the, the first reach. So it was a long way to the first mark and it was so gusty. And yeah, we had a, a big... Uh, spot where, where there was almost no wind so 
everyone kind of almost crashed and then um, yeah, I tried to keep, keep, uh, keep it solid. In the end, I thought I was fighting with Bruno, but then I saw uh, Matteo coming out of nowhere. I don't know, I guess he had a good jive and then uh, he was quick enough. And yeah, finished fourth and that's, that's good for me. When you're going that fast on the foil, is it possible to have a look around or are you just focused on going in a straight line? I have to say today it's extra tricky. You know, you can have a quick look, but usually you don't turn around your head fully, just like so, so you can see a color of a sail or whatever. So that's the maximum you can do. It's very different from the fin where you can hear them coming. Does, do you hear the foils at all? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. No, usually not. Some, some brands have some loud foils. That's nice as a competitor against them. Um, but yeah, it's just more that we try to remember where everyone exited the drive and then you can kind of guess where they are going. So yeah, that's our game. Well, good luck in the last one. Thank you. And that put me in the seventh place for the event for that moment. But then due to the disqualification of Johan, um, I moved up into sixth place for that um, event. And uh, yeah, I think you all, you've all heard about the disqualification and the stuff. There's basically not much more I can, I can say about that. But I mean, this just, yeah, was a crazy last day. Um, because yeah, nobody knew what's going to happen now with the disqualification or not. Um, the, the sales were being measured and so on. And we were on standby hoping for wind on the last day, but there was none. So it was really a tough waiting game. And off, after all, the, the whole season was so exciting, um, I feel like. I mean, let me know in the comments um, if you can remember um, another so exciting season. Um, of course, for me, it's also different to be part in it for the first time, really. Um, but that was just a great experience. Some of you may remember the video I did before the season from Tenerife, where I said my goal is top 15 um, in the annual ranking and maybe to have some top 10 results in uh, good events for me. And now to finish the event in fifth place <laughs> overall is just unbelievable. And um, yeah, of course, I would have never thought about that. Um, just amazing and I feel like I still need time to really um, to really yeah think about it to say why I've been suddenly so good and yeah just it is uh, much better than in Tenerife and a lot more consistent so yeah this is something I will fig try to figure out and of course I will build on that um, I'm super motivated to go back to the winter training on Tenerife so as I said, um, yeah, hit the subscribe button if you uh, want to stay updated. And uh, once again, thanks for every one of you following the journey and um, also to, um, to everyone supporting like my sponsors, as I said. And um, yeah, also once again for Patrick, um, he himself, he was on, um, also in Japan um, because he's living in Australia. He was flying to China to check the production for next year. So he came there for a visit. Um, always nice meeting him in person. Then, of course, Alex Cousin, um, the main um, development rider um, of the gear. And um, also Henning here from my area in North, northern Germany. Um, yeah, so many great people behind this brand. And I'm happy to continue with them. Um, yeah, and for you watching, uh, I wish you a very windy year next year. But for, first of all, uh, Merry Christmas and then a happy new year and uh, yeah hopefully see you in the future video